Hey everyone, this is David from the Cast Iron Connection, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're starting a new series called Hunting Cast Iron in the Wild. We're going to be going to different places such as flea markets, thrift stores, antique malls in search of cast iron cookware. I'm excited about the hunt. This part of the fun is not knowing what you're going to find. So let's go and hunt cast iron cookware. Hey, we're about to head out on a road trip to the flea market this morning in search of some cast iron. We're going to start our video series on hunting for cast iron in the wild today. So hope we do good and have some success. So let's check it out. It's about 25 miles from my house to the flea market that I'm heading to, which is not too far as long as we find something good. I have a friend that sells cast iron a lot down there. So I'm really excited to see her this morning. I think she just bought out a collector. So she probably has a lot of nice pieces. So looking forward to that. We're here and it does look like she has a lot of nice pieces. She's got uh, three tables completely full of all sorts of cast iron pots, skillets, and a few oddball pieces. Here we have a Three Notch Lodge, number eight Birmingham Stoving Range, Red Mountain Lid. Here's a piece that I'm really interested right here, a Griswold Waffle Maker. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. It's got all three of the pieces, the top, the bottom, and the base. Really excited about this piece right here. We'll ask her in a minute how much she wants for it. Over here on the other table is just an assorted group. Here of a Puritan skillet made by Griswold. We have another favorite, which is an awesome skillet. Wagner ware, round bottom. She has quite a few plated skillets. All of them Griswold. A nice little set. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A Wagner wire, that's an old one with a heat ring. Here we go, another older Wagner right there. And those are, don't see very many of them around here. And another Sydney, pretty old skillet right there. A National, don't see very many of those. I don't think I've ever owned one. Here's another pretty good pile of skillets. There's quite a few victors made by Griswold. Here's a number nine griddle. Here's a Griswold, an old one. It's a nice skillet except for the sulfur burns. The sulfur burns is uh, pretty common around older skillets. Wagner Ware Dutch ovens, some large Dutch ovens, nice camping pieces right there. Okay, we just got back from our hunt and we did bag a couple of nice pieces. Uh, one of the pieces we got today is a number five Puritan skillet. I'll take a couple of more close up pictures of this one in just a second. Here's a little more of a close-up look.
at the two pieces I got today. A nice little skillet, Puritan. It was made by Griswold. And uh, I'm really happy about it. It's got a really good finish. It looks like it can be washed and used just like it is. But I'm gonna go ahead and strip it down to the bare metal and go ahead and re-season it the way that I like to myself. Has a little bit of a, a casting flaw, but that's okay. The surface is beautiful. In deer hunting words, it's more like a spike. But I got the big 12 pointer right here. It's a Griswold. It's a Griswold waffle maker. Got both pieces and the base that goes with it. Really excited about this piece. It's in really good shape. Doesn't have any problems, no chips. It's not been overheated. The waffle plate is really nice and pristine. It's in good shape. Got all three pieces together. Didn't miss anything. Really excited about this piece here. got this at Collinsville Trade Day in Collinsville, Alabama. Just want to give a shout out to Marina Donner and her uh, space there where she's a vendor at Collinsville Trade Day. You can find her at Collinsville Trade Day usually on Saturdays. You can also find her at Mountaintop Flea Market on Sundays. That's between Atala and Walnut Grove, Alabama. So I'm really excited about these two pieces. Can't wait till I get them good and cleaned up. They're not in bad shape now. So just really excited about the hunt today that I didn't go out and uh, come back empty. I came back with a couple of trophies. Excited about that. I just want to share a couple of tips about collecting cast iron. And when you do go out and collect, one thing that I like to, to do is build connections with people. That's one reason why that I named my channel The Cast Iron Connection. Make connections with people. People who collect and restore and use cast iron cookware, you'll be surprised how much cast iron cookware is out there. When I first started collecting, I had a hard time finding pieces until I started connecting with people. Because in the end, when it comes down to it, the connections we make is all that really matters, right? Now we may collect pieces. I mean, I might be fond of the pieces that I collect, but one day I'm gonna pass them to someone else. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please subscribe to my channel Hit the notification bell and I will keep on coming. Thanks for watching the Cast Iron Connection.